Welcome to Family Gamer TV. Now, as a genre, pet sims have got a bit of a problem. Um, the thing with these games is that they're really, really great when you get them, but obviously you can only repeat the same activities again and again, and after a while it's pretty inevitable that you get fed up of it and put it away and don't think about it again. Um, it doesn't really encourage the kind of feelings you want to have towards a real pet, for example. But now, PlayStation Vita Pets is a bit different, and that's because it's not just a sim, so it's not the same as Nintendogs. It doesn't just have that looking after the pet aspect, the, you know, stroking it and feeding it and stuff stuff like that. It's actually got this kind of adventure aspect to it as well. Now, PlayStation Vita Pets shows how different it is right from the very start of the game. So right at the beginning, you go into this, um, this kind of uh, backyard type um, area with all these pens and there are all these different kinds of dogs for you to choose from. This is pretty typical, this is how the adoption process works in most of these games. You get, you see all the different breeds and then you pick the one you'd like. Um, but in this case, each of the different dogs has a different voice. Um, and not just barking, they actually speak in human language. Um, they give you these little speeches about why you should adopt them over the other breeds. Um, I think there are two, there are four breeds, two male and two female, and they each have a different voice. Um, but the point of these voices is clearly to give you some kind of guidance in the game, and that's because of it being an adventure and not just a pet sim. Um, if you didn't have these dogs talking, you'd probably have to have a separate narrator, and that would make it seem less personal. Um, this way, it's just you and your dog, and you're going off on this adventure together. Now, you first learn about that adventure when you read a, a book to your dog. You get it from the bookshelf um, on your dog's, uh, in your dog's new home, and you open it up, and there's actually this beautiful kind of animation, this paper craft style animation that caught me completely by surprise when I saw it. I wasn't expecting this kind of level of care and detail to go into this game. Um, and it tells the story of a king and his canine best friend, um, and kind of uh, introduces a mystery of, of what's happened to them. Um, you know, this this king and this dog that lived a long time ago. You know, how did they uh, how did they disappear? What happened to them? And that introduces the story that you then uh, the mystery that you then solve um, for the rest of the game. Now, the story obviously is uh, is not particularly deep, but then again, this is a kid's game. Um, it's perfectly fine for younger players. Just like the, the voices for the dogs, to be honest, um, they're just like typical cartoon character voices. I found them annoying. Kids definitely won't. Um, but what you do on this adventure is um, the first clue is right outside your, your back garden, in fact, which is incredibly convenient, obviously. Um, but what you soon discover is that when you try to go out there to find it, um, you can't actually open the back gate. Your dog tries to pull on it and then tells you that it isn't strong enough and it needs to go and train up its tug toy, its, uh, its tugging ability with a tug toy, which you then have to go and buy from the smart TV inside your dog's home. Now, this is quite an interesting setup. Um, instead of giving you all the, all the tools and things that you need right at the start, the game introduces barriers and then sends you back to solve them yourself. And you, you kind of get this kind of role-playing game feel to it. Your dog needs to level up in particular areas to be able to help you on this adventure, to help you get through these, these doors and these other barriers, um, to follow this treasure trail, find these clues, and find out what happened to this king and his dog. So you go home, you train up with the tug toy, and then you can go back out and you can open the door. And that's kind of how the adventure progresses. Each step of the way, you know, you, you follow down this, this kind of beautiful trail in these beautiful environments, um, you know, that really show off the, the Vita graphics in comparison to the, the, uh, the less high-res um, DS graphics, for instance. And, um, and then you come across a barrier, you figure out what kind of skill you need to use to cross it, and then you go home and you train up your dog. Um, you may be along the way, you might dig up some buried treasure or, you know, play some fetch. And when you're at home, you might kind of feed your dog or go and give it a shower. But those aren't really necessary things. Um, they just kind of, uh, they slow the progress of the adventure a bit and make it feel more involved, um, like there's more to do and stuff like that. In fact, that adventure will probably take you a good few hours. Um, so if you play it in, in chunks, it'll last you a good few days. Um, potentially much longer than a normal pet sim would. And obviously after the end of that adventure, once it's over, it technically does return to more of a traditional pet sim. Um, but because of the, the kind of extra features of the beta, there are actually some extra things to do. You can um, teach your dog tricks uh, with the voice recognition, kind of like in the, in the Nintendo DS, uh, the Nintendogs game. Um, but you can also use the augmented reality to bring the dog into the, into the real world. Um, 
and you can you know play games with it with the with the touch controls which are really really intuitive in fact i played the entire game without using any of the buttons on the on the vita itself i just used the touch screen and i didn't even realize it at the time which is uh, which is quite good for a touch controlled game obviously a lot of smartphone games can feel kind of fiddly um, but this felt absolutely natural absolutely perfect even after you've done all that, the environments uh, that the designers have created for this adventure outside of your back garden, um, this quite long, expansive adventure, are so great that you might want to go back and play through it again anyway. It's got all the normal pet sim stuff there, but it's got this adventure as well. You could maybe play it through with all the different breeds. Basically, it's just got a lot more kind of replay value, you might want to say, than other pet sim games. And for that reason, and just because it's so beautiful, if you like these kind of games, if you're into you know, dogs and stuff like that, definitely worth giving it a look. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon.